Okay, what we're going to be working on now is we're going to be creating an assembly model using um, the, mainly the constraint functions in Auto, um, Autodesk Inventor. Um, I need to go ahead and, and load my first component, and that's going to be my body. Load that in, and I'm going to hit Escape so I don't accidentally load in a second uh, component. Now you'll notice over here in my model browser, I have an open circle next to my body, and that basically means that the part is not constrained. Typically for the first component, we want to make sure that we ground this so it's fully locked down so we can constrain the other components to this particular part. So I'm going to highlight this and go to grounded, and you can see over here in um, the model browser that we definitely have it grounded now fully. I'm going to go ahead and load my second component after I rotate my part to get a little bit better orientation here. I'm going to go to my place, my moving jaw. Now before I load this, before I click it, I need to rotate this in a couple of uh, ways to make sure I can get my um, surfaces that I want. And that's the nice thing about this. You can go ahead and right click and rotate before you click to make sure you get it in the correct orientation and then you can place it where you want. Now we can hit escape and we're going to make sure that we apply the uh, first constraint. To do that, we're going to go up to the constraint area. I'm going to select mate, okay? And I'm going to make sure that my opposed is selected. That way it doesn't rotate my component. I want this face to sit on that face. And you can see that it beeps and it puts it in the location and I can say OK. All right. My next constraint is also going to be, um, I need two more constraints to fully constrain this part. So I'm going to go ahead and hit mate again. Okay, and in this case, I'm going to hit flush. And I'm going to make sure that I have my XZ uh, planes of each component available. Now, in order to show those, I can go ahead over to the model browser rather than browsing through the components here. I can just use that in my model browser. It just makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to select the XZ origin plane for my uh, body and the XZ origin plane for my um, component, and it puts it into place. And say OK to confirm that particular constraint. Now, I don't know if you can notice this, but it's not exactly sitting in the correct position, so I've got one more constraint to apply. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit my constraint button, mate again. I'm going to make sure flush is selected. And in this case, I want to select the YZ plane because I want to make sure that this is perfectly centered. And you can see, there we go. Now it's fully constrained into the place that I need to go. All right, my next step is I'm going to insert my next component. And that is going to be my spindle. Open that up. And this is in the orientation that I want for right now. So I'll go ahead and load that and escape out of it. That way I can actually uh, take a look at this. Now, we're going to go ahead and add our first constraint with our spindle. That's the next step. And now for this, I'm going to use a different type of constraint. It is going to be the insert here. And I'm going to make sure that I used the opposed. And that is already selected. OK. Now I'm going to have to rotate this slightly because I want to make sure that this particular component, I'm going to select my first one. I'm going to select this face. And then I'm going to go back and zoom out a little bit here. Rotate my components again. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight this area where the axis is. And you can see that it's fully it's uh, constrained there. I've inserted my spindle into that hole, and you can see that it's actually there. Now, after that constraint, the rotation of this component still remains. So I can actually rotate this here if I want to. We're going to leave that rotation alone. So that constraint is not going to be removed there. Uh, because we do want the spindle to rotate inside of these jaws. So the next component that we're going to insert is the pin that's going to be able to hold the spindle in place. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put my pin, open this up, I'm going to place this over here, and then escape out of it. That way I have my first one um, there, and I don't have a second version of that. Now I'm going to go ahead and put another insert in there. Okay, pardon me, I'm not going to use insert, I'm going to use mate here. And I'm going to make sure that opposed is selected. Move this out of the way. I'm going to select my axis and then my axis, and you can see that it's uh, posted in there. And I can say OK for that. And when I move this over, and if I rotate a little bit, it's not exactly in the position that I want. I want it a little bit higher. I want to actually do another constraint here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, expand my spindle and my pin origins. And I don't really need this right now for the body, so I'm going to basically uh, hide those. That's the nice thing. We can open and close those. And we can go ahead and put another constraint using the origin planes like we did before. I'm going to use the mate command again. Okay, mate. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that flush is selected. Okay, and I'm going to select this plane, the XZ plane of my axis. And then I'm going to select the y, XY plane of my pin to make sure that it's evenly located. And I'll say OK. Now the next step, I need to insert a couple of nuts to make sure that my pin doesn't slip out of my spindle. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Now I don't actually have a model. If you take a look at my folder, I don't actually have a model uh, that I've created for that. But what I can do is I can go ahead and place something from the content center. If I go to the content center, um, I've got all these fasteners here. And this is already open because I was uh, playing around with this the other day. But what I want to do is I want to look at my fasteners. Okay, I go back to this main menu here, and I can click on my nuts. Okay, and I want to put a cap nut in there. So I can double click on that folder, and it'll open up my uh, cap nuts as well. Okay, now the book calls for the DIN 917. And we need to make sure that we get one that's the proper size. And if I scroll down a little bit, and I looked at my book here, I need one that's in row three. So I've got that selected, and then I can say OK, and it'll allow me to put that in here. Okay, so to place this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over the axis. I'm going to hover over the pin. That way I can make sure that we place that. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the outside surface. And then I'm going to click the check and auto drop. And it puts it right where I want to put it. And now that I have one nut on one end, I need to put another one on the other end of the pin. So I could go ahead and place from content center and do the same. But I'm just going to show you a different way here. I can copy it from here and then paste it into this area um, somewhere on the uh, the model. Now with this, I'm going to go ahead and have to apply some constraints to get this to be uh, correct, put it in the correct position. So I'm going to go to the constraint button again, and I want to go to insert this time. I'm going to make sure that a pose is selected, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to the nut. I'm going to have to rotate this thing around a little bit. And I'm going to make sure I put the axis here. Zoom out. Go back over to the pin. And then go ahead and select that, and that puts it in the correct position for me. And my next step is going to put my last component in the part, and that's going to be the fixed jaw. This is my moving jaw, and I want to make sure that I put my fixed jaw in here. And I'm just trying to rotate this in a good position so I can actually see this working a little bit better. And sometimes trying to rotate things around in the assembly model is a little challenging. 
okay so I've got this kind of where I want so I'm going to go ahead and put in my fixed straw in my assembly okay instead of placing from the content center I'm going to go back to place from my list and I have my fixed straw here I'm going to open it up okay, and it's already in the correct orientation that I want because I'm going to place it right in this area so I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to hit escape to make sure that I have that there. Now that this is in the model, I need to move it to the proper position. So I'm going to go to constrain and I'm going to go to insert. Okay, I'm going to make sure I hit opposed. And I'm going to go ahead to the axis. I'm going to make sure I choose the axis of this hole and make sure that the back edge of the part is selected. And then I'm going to go over to the axis of my body, and then you can see that it moves it in position. And then I can say OK. I'm going to have to do the same for the other hole to make sure that it's constrained properly. So I'm going to have to move in a little bit because later you can insert some screws into that area to make sure that the part doesn't move. So I'm going to go ahead and go to constrain again. Okay, so I'm going to put my last constraint on here. If you take a look, I'm going to try mate. And I'm going to go ahead and go to my hole. And then go to my hole for the screw on the fixed, sorry, on the body. And there we go. And then it's locked in position. Okay. So now I have my, my uh, assembly fully built. If I wanted to go ahead and apply some... Um, apply some motion or some animation to that, I could. Um, I could also put um, some screws in using the con content center um, if I can find out what type of screws go in there. But that's a very simple assembly that you can put together to, um, to use the uh, concept of constraints. Now, please keep in mind, I did pause the video quite a bit because sometimes assembly modeling is very tricky. Um, you will end up having errors. You're going to end up having putting constraints on things. They won't work. It'll move unexpectedly. So you'll have to do trial and error a little bit with this when you're move, when you're putting things together. But there's nothing wrong with that. So good luck in putting this um, assembly together for your practice.